Prince Adolphus, Duke of Cambridge, have three children, George, Augusta and Mary Adelaide. Prince George, Duke of Cambridge, was born on the 26th of March, 1819, at Cambridge House in Hanover. His father was Prince Adolphus, Duke of Cambridge, a son of King George III of the United Kingdom. His mother was Princess Augusta of Hesse Castle. Prince George of Cambridge was educated in Hanover until 1830. He was then educated in England. His uncle, King William IV, hoped that George and his cousin Princess Victoria of Kent would marry when they were older. However, George did not believe in arranged marriages. He felt they were almost always certain to fail. Victoria also did not want an arranged marriage, but was agreeable to marrying her first cousin, Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. In 1837, his cousin Victoria became Queen of the United Kingdom, upon their uncle's death. Almost ten years later, on the 8th of January 1847, George married Sarah Fairbrother, without the Queen's consent. This meant the marriage was considered null and void, as it was in contravention of the 1772 Royal Marriages Act. Sarah was not titled Duchess of Cambridge or entitled to the style of Her Royal Highness. They had two sons born before they were married, George and Adolphus, and their only son born after they married was Augustus. But because they were married without consent of the Queen, Augustus was declared illegitimate and ineligible to succeed to the Duke's titles. The Queen ignored Sarah's existence also. Their children took the surname Fitzgeorge and Sarah called herself Mrs. Fitzgeorge. George had many affairs and mistresses over the years, his most notable being Louisa Beauclerk, whom he had a relationship with from 1847 until 1882 when she passed away. George embarked on a long military career, becoming a colonel in the Hanoverian army. On the 3rd of November 1837, he became a brevet colonel in the British Army. From October 1838 to April 1839, he worked in Gibraltar for the army, then served in Ireland. By May 1845, he held the rank of Major General. After his father's death on the 8th of July 1850, George succeeded to his father's titles of Duke of Cambridge, Earl of Tipperary, and Baron Culloden. During the Crimean War, he received the command of the 1st Division of the British Army in the East, and in 1854 he was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General. In 1856 he was appointed General Commanding-in-Chief, and later in 1862 to Field Marshal Commanding-in-Chief. In 1887 he became the Commanding-in-Chief of the Forces. As Commander-in-Chief, George was involved in the formation of the Staff College and the Royal Military School of Music. He also became the Governor of the Royal Military Academy in Woolwich. In 1860, he changed the strict corporal punishment in the army. Soldiers would only be flogged for serious offences, such as mutinous conduct during wartime. The Duke was opposed to many new reforms and resisted almost every attempt to reform or modernise the army. Parliament passed the War Office Act in 1870, which subordinated the Commander-in-Chief of the Forces to the Secretary of State for War, and in 1871 the custom of purchasing an office which had instilled elitism among the army was abolished. The Duke of Cambridge strongly resented this move, which was shared with many. With mounting pressure against him for reform, the Duke was forced to resign on the 1st of November 1895. He was succeeded by Lord Wolsey. He was given the title of Honorary Colonel-in-Chief to the forces upon his resignation. As George aged, his strength and hearing began to fail. At Queen Victoria's funeral, he was unable to ride to the funeral and had to attend in a carriage. On the 17th of March 1904, George passed away from a stomach hemorrhage and was buried next to his wife, whom had died in 1890 in Kensal Green Cemetery.
Augusta of Cambridge was born on the 19th of July, 1822, in Hanover. She spent her earlier years in Hanover, where Adolphus was the viceroy for his brothers, Kings George IV and William IV of the United Kingdom. Augusta had one brother, George, and one sister, Mary Adelaide. When Augusta's first cousin, Queen Victoria, succeeded their uncle, William IV, in 1837, their uncle Ernest became King of Hanover because of Salic law in place in Hanover at the time, which barred female succession to the throne. Augusta and her family returned to England and lived in Cambridge House in Piccadilly, London, and Cambridge Cottage in Kew Gardens. On the 28th of June, 1843, Augusta married Frederick William of mecklenburg strelitz They were first cousins through their mothers and second cousins through their fathers. Augusta then moved to the Grand Duchy, but visited London often and retained close ties with the British royal family. Upon marriage, Augusta became the hereditary Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz They had two sons, but only one survived to adulthood. Frederick William who died in 1845, and Adolphus Frederick, who was born in 1848. On the 6th of September 1860, Frederick William succeeded as the Grand Duke of mecklenburg strelitz with Augusta as the Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz following the death of her father-in-law. Because Augusta had no daughters, she was very close to her niece Mary of Teck, and the two wrote to each other often. In 1887, Augusta took part in the Golden Jubilee celebrations of her cousin, Queen Victoria. After her mother's death in 1889, the Grand Duchess bought a home near Buckingham Palace, which became known as Mecklenburg House. She would stay there for a portion of each year until her mobility issues made it difficult for her to travel. Augusta also attended Victoria's Diamond Jubilee celebrations in 1897. Following her cousin's death in 1901, Augusta assisted in the preparations for the coronation of King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra, providing information on matters of etiquette and attire. She had been present at the coronation of King William IV and Queen Adelaide and at the coronation of Queen Victoria. In 1904, Augusta's husband passed away. That same year, her brother also passed away. Their son succeeded as the Grand Duke of mecklenburg strelitz Due to old age, Augusta was unable to attend the coronation of her niece, Mary, and her husband, King George V of the United Kingdom. Augusta had four grandchildren, Marie born 1878, Jutta born 1880, Adolphus Frederick born 1882, and Carl born 1888. In August 1914, World War I started. Her only child had died only months previous and her grandson, Adolphus Frederick, was the new Grand Duke. The war proved stressful for Augusta. She stopped receiving a pension from the United Kingdom due to living in an enemy country. Thankfully, she continued to correspond with her niece Mary with the help of Crown Princess Margaret of Sweden. In autumn 1916, Augusta's health began to fail. She spent much of her time sleeping. When she was awake, she would listen to letters or newspapers read aloud to her. Augusta died on the 5th of December 1916. She was the longest-lived grandchild of George III and the last link to the British branch of the House of Hanover. Mary Adelaide of King was born on the 27th of November 1833 in Hanover. She spent her early years in Hanover. When Mary Adelaide's first cousin, Queen Victoria, succeeded their uncle, King William IV, in 1837, their uncle Ernest became King of Hanover. Mary Adelaide and her family returned to England and lived in Cambridge House in Piccadilly, London, and Cambridge Cottage in Kew Gardens. In 1850, Mary Adelaide's father died. Both Mary Adelaide's siblings were married. Mary Adelaide and her mother continued to live at Cambridge Cottage. When the Duchess died in 1889, her son George moved into the cottage. When he died in 1904, the cottage passed back to the Crown. Mary Adelaide made her social debut in 1851 at the opening of the Great Exhibition. The Duchess and Mary Adelaide enjoyed the social events in London. Mary Adelaide was known for being on the heavier side and because of this many members of her family considered her unmarriageable.
She was nicknamed Fat Mary. However, Mary Adelaide did not care as much as her family and was high-spirited and full of life. For this, the public loved her and called her the People's Princess. After failed marriage prospects with Prince Oscar of Sweden, later King Oscar II of Sweden and other princes, a suitable candidate was found in Württemberg, Prince Francis, Duke of Teck. Mary Adelaide and Francis were wed on the 12th of June 1866. They had four children, Mary, Adolphus, Francis and Alexander. Mary Adelaide and Francis had a happy marriage but had chronic financial problems, mainly due to Mary Adelaide's extravagance and generosity. Queen Victoria gave them an apartment at Kensington Palace, where all of their children were born. In 1883, they moved to Central Europe, where it was cheaper to live. They eventually settled in Florence, Italy, before returning to England in 1885. They lived in White Lodge and Kensington Palace. Mary Adelaide devoted her life to charity and was the first royal patron of Bernardos. Mary Adelaide was keen for her daughter to marry one of the sons of the Prince of Wales. Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avondale, was the eldest son and second in the line of succession. When Mary was suggested as a bride, Albert Victor gave no resistance to the match. Mary, who had been brought up to idolise the royal family, felt it was her duty to marry him. Their engagement was announced on the 6th of December 1891, with the wedding set for the 27th of February 1892. In January 1892, Albert Victor fell ill with pneumonia and died on the 14th of January 1892, surrounded by his parents, siblings, fiancé and Mary Adelaide. After his death, Mary and George, Albert Victor's brother, grew closer and a year later on the 29th of April 1893, George proposed to Mary and she accepted. They were wed in July 1893. Mary Adelaide lived long enough to see Mary's first three children born, David, Albert and Mary. In the summer of 1896, Mary Adelaide's health worsened. In April 1897, she had an emergency operation, but quickly recovered and attended Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee celebrations. On the 27th of October 1897, Mary Adelaide had another emergency operation, but died two hours after the operation was completed from heart failure. She was buried in the Royal Vault at St George's Chapel. Her husband passed away three years later and was buried next to her.